Not so long ago, the whole of North America, across to Siberia and Europe, was shattered and destroyed in nights of hell. In a series of deadly catastrophic events, mammoths, together with the Clovis Indian people, were wiped out. These memories are still retained in cloudy mythology. What agent of destruction rendered them extinct? Did it happen just once or was it a series of events that determined these mass extinctions? Siberia, Alaska, Malta. Three mass slaughter sites. Sites littered with carcasses and skeletons. Some are petrified as rocks, others invaded and buried in limestone. Some are entombed in bitumen, still more buried in ice and peat bogs. Their instantaneous end was horrific. Some are impeccably preserved, but the vast bulk are shattered and dissembered by forces so potent they are not evident today. We are naive to these mysterious powers. The last mass extinction was not so long ago, perhaps only three and a half thousand years ago, and it's etched in mankind's mythology. Let's chase this mystery. There are numerous sites all over the world that illustrate the spectrum of mass destruction. Larry Akinbrough's charts pinpoint the megafauna sites right across North America, then spreading right through to Europe, Russia, and even into Japan. Here at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, you can see the gases bubbling up through the water and bitumen. Like much of Los Angeles, it is rich in petroleum products. This bitumenized area stretches extensively and conceals the bones of not only mammoths, but saber-toothed tigers, short-nosed bears, camels, horses, and all extinct. But not only large animals, mice, birds, flora, and insects, all preserved within the tar to a depth of 60 feet. The most detailed site is in South Dakota, where Dr. Larry Akinrod invited us over to check his excavation of a limestone bolus on a hilltop. The site is around 100 feet by 120 feet across and some 70 feet deep and contains a wide variety of extinct animals in this calcium bolus packed with bones. The bodies have lost most of their collagen and are part of a huge calcium deposit that is micro-layered to its bottom. Species include yesterday's camel, short-faced bear, coyote, antelope, and altogether some 84 species, most of which are primitive microfauna. Carbon dating of the site places it around the 26,000-year mark. I was also intrigued by the minute layering of the calcium in the sinkhole as it progressed to the bottom of the hole. These layers actually went through the bodies, so could not be caused by slow deposition. Layering, however, can be caused by electrical discharge. Were these forces involved in the destruction at this site? Larry's explanation of the death of all these species revolved around drowning in this sinkhole as they fed around its edges. This is similar to the explanation of the Librea tar pits. However, mythology does not support this theory. We'd already discussed with Adrian Mayer the mythology of the first American peoples. She'd found it amazing the part that the cosmic thunderbolt played in the destruction of the megafauna. According to legend, the creator killed the giants with a cosmic thunderbolt. She emphasises this was not the ordinary lightning, but a world-shattering event. The Lakota Nation had sent hunting tribes down here for many, many years, and they had a different interpretation 
on what had caused the fossilization of these great beasts. Here is an excerpt from the Lakota mythology. The Creator sung a song of destruction and sent down fierce thunderbirds to wage a great battles against the humans and the giant animals. They fought for a very long time because the evil humans and animals had become very powerful and neither could gain an advantage. Finally, at the height of the battle, the Thunderbirds sent down their most powerful thunderbolts all at once. The fiery blast shook the entire world, toppling mountain ranges and setting forests and prairies ablaze. The flames leapt up to the sky in all directions, sparing only a few people at the highest peaks. It was so hot that the world's lakes boiled up and dried before their eyes. Even the rocks burned up red hot, and the giant animals and people burned up where they stood. A great flood followed, and when the survivors went out, they found bleached bones of the giant animals in mud and rock all over the world. What were these cosmic thunderbolts? A revolution occurred when plasma physicist Anthony Peratt discovered a relationship between rock art petroglyphs and electromagnetic plasma instabilities. These rock art figures and geometric scribblings mimicked the images produced in government laboratories, whilst the mythology of thunderbolts, such as Zeus's weapons, reflected these very same formations. These were mythologically tied to many destructive episodes. Not only lightning, but earthquakes and other natural disasters such as comets, creation myths and plagues. I strongly suspect that massive discharges from rats' plasma instabilities hold the key not only to mass extinctions, but even species changes after such an event. I want to discuss the ramifications of the mass extinction of the megafauna and the mythological evidence with physicist Wolf Thornhill. As an advocate of the electrical universe, he is adamant that plasma instabilities, whatever their origin, were the fundamental cause of these massive upheavals. I met with him in the grounds of the Australian National University some time ago to discuss the evidence. Once you look at it from a forensic point of view of, uh, for instance, um, even going back prehistory, you look at uh, petroglyphs, the carvings on rocks, the formations that we see and we think are strange looking stick figures or maybe aliens are actually all forms of uh, plasma discharge instabilities. And these are the instabilities we see in laboratories in plasma tubes. That's right. And these are the sorts of things that the ancients uh, drew and sculpted when they talked about Jupiter's thunderbolt. And, and these, are, these are actually cut in rock and, I might add, painted by anything from the Australian Aboriginals to uh, That's right. the South American... Uh, North American, yes. all around the world, these... And th- this comes down to fine details, like the Australian Aborigines have the Lightning Brothers, uh, where you have a figure with their arms up, out raised like this and uh, their legs spread, and uh, they've got the lightning coming from the, the knees yep. and the uh, elbows. At, and this is exactly where course, you'll get yeah. um, the discharges from a sharp curve in a plasma discharge. And, of course, this is backed up by mythology. I mean, um, I'll be interviewing Adrian Meyer, who's an expert on, uh, let's say, early American uh, fossils. Mm. And one of the claims of these, uh, let's say, early Americans was that lightning bolts, these things we're talking about now, mm. it actually destroyed the megafauna or mammoths, yes. dinosaurs, for that yes. matter. And well, not so long ago, I might add. Well, particularly in the case of the dinosaurs, uh, you need far more than just a simple impact. It requires a global change in the earth's gravity and this comes back to uh what is gravity you know it it really isn't understood all we've got is an equation which describes it and it includes a so-called physical constant the 
universal gravitational constant, which is the most inconstant thing yeah. in any textbook. Yeah. You know, every time they measure it, it's different, and there's, yeah. it's got people scratching their heads. But once you understand that gravity itself is a, a very weak electrical force between all matter, then it all becomes clear, because if you change the charge with one of these cosmic thunderbolts on the Earth or another body, the first thing it changes is the gravity. Right. And so what are some of the effects? So let's say we're getting a discharge. We could get a number of things. I mean, for instance, we're talking about maybe a localised uh, uh, reversal of the magnetic field. Yes. We can get, according to, let's say, yourself and Dave Talbot, we can get uh, electrical geological etching of the landscape, like such as carving out river valleys. Yes. And building of mountains, raising mountain and ranges, flattening of mountains. For mm. instance, some of the old literature, talk, literature talks about in these catastrophic events, the land, the hills skip like land. Yes, I like that. Literally. Yeah. Yes, and unfortunately, everyone uh, misinterprets it as metaphor. Yeah, well, <laughs> well there's so much met that seeming metaphor, which exactly they certainly weren't saying it was metaphor. No. They were saying as they saw it. Well, the very fact that uh, all of these uh, oral traditions and religious texts and that that comes down to us over thousands of years, these were considered to be the most important message that the ancients could pass to their descendants. And what do we do? We misinterpret them. Yeah, and they uh, so much of this stuff, you can see they were living in fear. I mean, I, mm. I bring up one of the topics of they used to give human sacrifices to try and control the planet. Absolutely. You have to, uh, yeah, it's very hard actually to even imagine what they were experiencing uh, and this is the problem of course and this is why we misinterpret these things it's because it's beyond our imagination uh, to have a sky that's uh, riddled with uh, colossal lightning bolts millions or billions of times more powerful than anything we witness today with um, puny lightning sparks and also to consider that they were observing planetary objects in the sky up close and personal. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, you, you can understand why people are hid in caves from the sight of yeah. the Lord. I wanted to talk to Rick Firestone from Berkeley National Laboratories. He's a nuclear physicist of the first rank, but he also has an impeccable belief in the validity of mythology, and he matches it with his scientific studies. Rick wrote the Table of Isotopes, which is used by scientific scholars throughout the world. This is the result of many years of being in charge of Berkeley's revolutionary cyclotron. Remarkable is the application of both mythology and nuclear physics in his groundbreaking book, The Cycle of Cosmic Catastrophes, in which he combines both modalities to unearth the causes of mass destruction. Rick's interest in archaeology began when he was sent samples from the ancient Ganey Clovis people site, which was associated with mammoth remains. This location showed radioactivity. The Clovis people's use of stone manufactured spearheads revealed tracks of what he believed were cosmic rays, which seemed to indicate a cosmic cause of their demise. He replicated these cosmic ray tracks in the very synchrotron laboratory. The site itself looked very strange, as if it had been blasted, but even more curious chemical discoveries were afoot. In related mammoth sites, it was found that the tusks had suffered a shower of metallic spirals containing iron and titanium. In addition was the discovery of minute carbon spirals a millimetre across and quite large compared to the metallic ones. The carbon spirals were vesicular and if cut open revealed millions of nanodiamonds. This was important as they were often seen at an impact site. Was this product the result of high energy discharges? Similar sites were discovered, and they lay below a layer called the black mat, a sort of clay vegetation ensemble. Above or within this mat, no Clovis evidence was discovered, and more remarkable, no megafauna remains. This black mat was a termination point that recorded a mass 
extinction. To Rick Firestone, this was as if the megafauna had been destroyed overnight. An actual example witnessed by mankind illustrates precisely the type of destruction and rebirth Earth has undergone in quite recent times. Israel's city of the plains, Strabo claims 13 cities, were hit by just such a cosmic thunderbolt. Sodom and Gomorrah were entirely destroyed and the Dead Sea depression some 720 metres below the Mediterranean was created, together with mountain building and hill flattening. The resultant geographical carnage probably extended right along the entire African Rift Valley. Immense electrical discharges rent the air with vast deposits of sulphur, that's brimstone, falling from the skies. Vast transmutation of elements occurred with vast cliffs of salt, sodium chloride, nitrates and other compounds being created. Mythology attributes this to the activity of Jupiter, also known as Zedek, Zeus and Amon. Other upheals in more distant times are attributed to other planets and comets. In future episodes, we will delve into these claims and attempt to place a date on these world-changing events.